Hello everybody, it's day two of the GS Eco Challenge and I decided to do uh, green at number two um, as it seemed like quite a nice route and uh, not too difficult as green three would be a little bit more tough and I used this one to see if I would be willing or able to do uh, green three. Uh, green three turned out to be a lot tougher than green two. Um, I had not uh, planned to ride with anybody specific and uh, hope to join and exit little groups as and when uh, required on the route. Um, I soon enough met up with three other guys just riding out in front of me and I was wondering if they were going to do the same route. Um, I also knew at this point, at this intersection, that uh, we had to turn left. I think uh, either they were a little bit confused or had other plans and they went straight ahead. So uh, I opted to rather follow the proper route, uh, which I knew, and turn left at this intersection. A little bit late on the road, about 20 k's or so, uh, the first off turn occurred and uh, here I was uh, hitting the dirt for the first time. I had also just passed some motorbike riders uh, sitting next to the road, uh, three of them and uh, as I came past they, they took off again as well so you'll see them behind me in the in the mirror um, I was planning to take a nice leisurely line ride and uh, the first point of call was here at Sanaspos where I wanted to take a photo then I'm looking for where the station is and uh, I decided to make a U-turn and, and turn around and go have a look at the train station itself. And here the guy is asking if everything's right and what's the direction. So I said everything's okay. And they carried on. I then uh, turned around when there was a big enough gap. gave him a wave and then went to explore the uh, the train station now I saw the summer post post on the other side of the train railway tracks so I had to get across and they were a little bit too high for me on the bike and uh, so decided to rather drive around so off I went to the other side of the train tracks found the opening in the gate the fence and then looked for the sign there it is and uh, park my bike and took a photo and then it was off again so uh, at this stage uh, taking it very easy I don't know what to expect of the dirt roads and I don't have any uh, protection underneath my bike so I need to be very careful when I ride dirt roads um, and at this stage my tires were still uh, pumped to full tall road pressures and uh, I took it easy the, the ground road was, was quite good uh, but I kept it to about 60 70 k's an hour uh, nothing too fast um, but I decided a little bit later on as you'll see to, to rather deflate them uh, here a little uh, drift coming up bone drop there were quite a few uh, small streams that were bone dry but there were also quite a few rivers that, that had some water and later on we'll see one with uh, some birds so uh, I decided to next shady spot 
uh, I'll uh, deflate the tires. So uh, I've got my uh, pressure ga gauge out, my little tool bag. And I deflated the tires. While I was deflating the tires, uh, another motorbike rider came past and uh, his name was Peter I uh, wanted to know if I was riding by myself and I was so he said he'd like to join up um, but uh, I rode a little bit slow for him um, there's Peter, we're taking off after deflating my tires uh, if there's one thing I've learned from the BMW club here in Pretoria is um, one has to ride at your own pace and uh, although Peter rode quite a bit faster than me he did wait at a few spots um, but in the end I was obviously too slow for him and, and he took off uh, we met up again in a little town uh, where we we are put some petrol in um, but he's much more afraid on the or much more knowledgeable on the dirt road than I was Also, I plan to stop quite often and, and take photos of the puppies and farms and so on. So uh, I didn't want to keep any other riders up. Uh, to me, it was a, a day of discovery, uh, not just just riding. You know, almost went, saw the car, backed off a bit, and they didn't even say thank you. Yes, yeah, Peter waiting for me at an intersection. Um, he took one or two photos of me coming around the corner. So now I'm getting a little bit more used to the sand, the, the dirt road, and. Uh, Instead of 60, 70, I'm pushing about 80, 85 now. Um, I trust this dirt road now a little bit more. Uh, with the deflated tires, a little bit better grip. Uh, although I've just got mostly road tires. I think I've got 90, 10, so 90% road, 10% off-road. And I think, yeah, Peter comes past me. This is a beautiful free state farms. As you can see, you can see for almost ever. Uh, very, very far to be seen. Um, early spring, so, but the grass is still very barren. Uh, had, have had hardly any rain around. Um, should should look awesome when uh, when spring does eventually arrive. The the dirt on the road wasn't too bad. Uh, here's another three uh, riders taking a break. Everything okay? Yeah, it is. Waiting for the truck. And back onto the dirt. My, my camera is fixed to the helmet. Um, but uh, I've put some stabilizing. Um, power tools on my video editing software and uh, with that I'm able to stop a little, a little bit more of the shakiness so you'll see the, the helmet come in and out of frame uh, quite, a, quite a bit here I just stopped I think to take some photos and uh, as I took off I did realize hang on I need to, uh, want to take some water so uh, I idled the bike and drank some water. You can see quite a bit of dust on my uh, my clothes and, and the pop. Here's another river. Yeah, that one's got a little bit of water. And the guy waiting by his bike that had just come past me, and he was going to take some photo of his buddy buddies crossing the river, I suppose. So I thought I'll add a little segment in of what the the dirt road looks like uninterrupted. That split scenes, and here we go. 
uh, sped up to about twice the speed so if you were doing this on a real one this would be at about 180 160 180 k's an hour much too fast for me This was now uh, nearing the end we are filled up for the first time with petrol. So here we're getting into Redisburg, I think it was. I love coming into small little towns and uh, specifically looking for the uh, local church and taking a photo with me in the bike in front of the church um, but strangely enough in this time in this town I didn't do it I just took it at a butcher after filling up with petrol um, I think the reason was that, that there were other BMW club members uh, already taking photos there uh, that I opted to do the same having a look where the petrol station is and I saw some people on the left there so I opted to uh, try that direction and see what what I could find yeah some cop cars I didn't notice it at the time and yeah the people on the left taking a break and some photos town photos and on the right people filling up with juice for their horses so from Redisburg I took the uh, route which was a small little dingy tar road from Redisburg all the way through to Edinburgh very little traffic on the road except for a tractor and one or two trucks maybe a car or two and I stopped at the local church for a photo and then took the road, the route north uh, towards the Oda Kral, which was uh, along the M1. Um, as I approached this spot, I saw a lot of birds flying around. So I thought, hang on, let me let me stop and have a look. So uh, stopped, put off the engine, and uh, sat there for about two or three minutes, just enjoying the birds flying all around me. There uh, were lots of insects in the air and they were obviously swooping around to try and catch as many of these insects as possible. Uh, some of these little insects, um, don't know exactly what they were, maybe some locusts, uh, also came flying into me. And it was off again and um, long open stretches of open farmland on both sides and every now and then a few trees and houses close to the road we are slow down in case there's people or cattle crossing and uh, then sped up again by now I was uh, regularly doing about a hundred k's an hour on the dirt um, as you can see there's a nice hard compact area that I'm riding in uh, which, which kept on going for quite a while there's another bridge I remember this uh, purple from the, the photos, um, the root photos I had seen before I had come down. So it was nice to actually now see it for myself, uh, what I in the past have had only seen on a few photos. Now I'm taking a few photos with my drift camera. and then it's off again so one pity is uh, I should have cleaned the lens a little bit more often 
Um, so a lesson learned with, with these four days of riding. And in the future I'll uh, take a little cloth and some, some liquids with to, to clean up the lens a little bit more often. Nice open road, copies in the distance. And this is also, I think, where I saw the tortoise for the first time. Yeah, there we go, there's the tortoise. I saw it. Mm. Slowing down, checking behind me that there's no other riders. Make the U-turn. Also, because I was riding by myself, I actually quite often forgot to put the the ABS off um, which I tend to do there we go there's a tortoise I need to look at my clocks and just see if I did switch off the ABS yeah it looks like the lights on there so here I stopped the tortoise and uh, I took an awesome photo with uh, with the tortoise which uh, is down my Facebook profile page. Getting out the camera for some photos. That's one in one or two jelly babies. And there's the awesome photo. Back on the road, not quite a Tuespur, but uh, very close to it, and oddly sped up, I don't ride this fast this on, on gravel. So I did meet another two riders that came in from the left and then went in to the same direction as me. Uh, I'm not sure if they were lost, a uh, part of the group, or maybe even... Uh, following some other route. Uh, I had planned to, to check it out later on, but uh, I never did. There's a wind pump. Um, strangely enough, uh, in, in the early part of the ride, a lot of the wind pumps were broken. But now on this side of the N1, uh, all the wind pumps seem to be working. some intersection or some things so I'm just checking uh, which way I need to go now I think I'm doing about a hundred hundred and ten yeah um, also chatting to the other people everybody comes off at uh, corners Hardly ever does anybody fall uh, on a straight line, and um, so what, what I do is I'm extra careful at the corners. I do slow down to, uh, to a little bit slower than I would normally want to, just in case the corner is a little bit sharper or steeper or more of a decline than, than expected. So we come to intersection. I saw the board, I thought. Beautiful farmland, poppies in the distance and open fell both sides. Removing some dust. So this year I'm coming along and uh, I see these cars and motorbikes standing in and I think oh uh oh somebody had an accident or something. So quite concerned. And then um, found out uh, they were not sure of their way. Well, it's okay. well, we're looking for the road now. <laughs> well, which road are you looking for? In the, 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 the green two. two. Green two? Yeah. 
They put arm on, and I think it's this way. All right. Mon says this way. Green too, yeah. So it should be about 20 k's away from. So uh, two, three guys took off and uh, left the others there. So it must have been two different groups, and um, eventually uh, met up with some of them again at the Oda Kral, uh, which is this is the entrance to it. Um, had a lovely lunch, and uh, there was a tame meerkat as well, which uh, was very photogenic. Not sure if I added any photos into the video here. So uh, I was part of the first people to arrive here for the morning breakfast or brunch. Uh, as you can see, I'm about the fourth or fifth bike. But by the time I left, uh, there were at least another 10, 15 bikes uh, stopping for breakfast. They had an awesome selection of things to eat. Uh, we opted for some chicken and uh, some lamb on the spit and some roosterbrood. And obviously a cold uh, beer and Sprite to, to wash it down with. Now, um, for some reason, the camera was off for the next hour, hour and a half of riding. This is the last little bit going home. And I got a moose of fright when this uh, bucket came past me. They are apologizing. And I never saw it in the mirror. Uh, don't know if you now saw it in the mirror as uh, it was approaching. So this uh, was after about 220 odd kilometers of riding dirt, uh, the longest I have ever ridden in my life. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, glad nothing went wrong, unlike uh, the next day when something did go wrong. And here uh, back on the tar road where I saw the guys from the morning going straight through. So um, at the main intersection crossing and then stopped off at the uh, local garage to uh, put in some petrol uh, all they had is 93 where I prefer putting in 95 uh, although I can't really feel much of a difference on the motorbike um, so I need to maybe decide if I'm going to carry on putting in 93 or or go back to 95 uh, looking for a petrol pump nothing available so coming around again and there's one of my ride buddies from the way down, Dion. As you can see, 14C. And afterwards, I did a quick geocache around the corner at the observatory. And then back to Marshall Sport with a full tank of petrol for the next day. And the guy on the left here taking photos of everybody coming in and home sweet home the final gate and uh, now it's time for a nice shower to get all the dust and dirt off me and uh, then to go and watch the afternoon's skills challenge uh, which was being held down by the river and then obviously the uh, evening dinner and entertainment uh, love the the tent city and being part of it and so ended a an awesome day day two of the GS Eco challenge and my first 270 kilometer off-road bike trip uh, thoroughly enjoyed it